You know, they say all good things must eventually come to an end. So this hat is disgusting. I've had it forever. It's been since the beginning of my YouTube channel. It's been around the world with me. It's all sweaty and gross and it stinks. So out with the old and in with the new. Oh, looks super good. But today we're talking about some advanced color grading techniques that you guys can use in Premiere Pro to take your color grading to that next level. So what do you think? New hat, it's nice and clean. You guys thought I was ending the channel or something, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, right. I just figured, you know, Cody blue, blue hat, looks super good. Welcome back to the channel, filmmaking homies. It's your boy, Cody Blue, and hopefully I didn't worry any of you guys with that intro. It's just, you know, this has been one of my favorites, been around forever, and I'm sad to see it go, but it's good to have a new look here on the channel. Hopefully you guys like it. Now today, I'm stuck in the office because it's been snowing for like the past week, and I don't even wanna look outside, much less have to deal with shoveling or anything like that. So we're in the office today talking about advanced color grading techniques that you guys can use in Premiere Pro just to kind of take your color grading to that next level. Now these techniques aren't something that I'm using in every single one of my videos, but I think they're good to have in your arsenal so that you can use them for like travel videos or client videos or anything where you're willing to put in a little bit extra effort. So we'll kind of show you guys how to isolate your subject a little bit better how to change the hue of specific colors, and how to get beautiful looking skin tones. Now I know I did a full video talking about how to get beautiful skin tones in Premiere Pro, but today we're gonna kinda take that one step further and show you guys how to actually isolate those skin tones instead of manipulating your entire clip. So we'll talk about that, as well as a couple other techniques in Premiere Pro. Let's get into it. All right guys, welcome back to my Premiere Pro. Now, apologies for doing two Premiere Pro tutorials right in a row, but unfortunately the weather's just not very good. And I originally wanted to go out and shoot some photos on the A6000, but I can't right now. So we're gonna have to postpone that video for another day. But today we're talking about advanced color grading techniques in Premiere Pro. Now I've got a couple of clips lined up for you guys and I've already given them a basic color grade. Now I have a full video talking about my color grading process if you guys want to check it out. But today we're just talking about the advanced techniques of kind of fine tuning your color grades a little bit. So on this first clip, you guys saw this clip in my GoPro Hero 7 video. But what you probably didn't know is that the exposure of this clip actually changes as we get closer to the end of the clip. So as you'll see, if I push play here, it's nice and dark and then it kind of brightens up and we lose a little bit of our contrast and different things like that. And that's just because the camera is compensating for the trees and the background and all of that different stuff. So it tried to compensate for the exposure and unfortunately, it didn't do a very good job. But we can fix this by utilizing keyframes in our Lumetri color effect. Now, if you don't know what keyframes are, basically keyframes allow you to make a change over time, whether it's changing your scale or changing your rotation or changing your exposure. So that's what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use keyframes to try and get the end exposure to match the exposure that we see here at the beginning of this clip. You can see it's nice and dark and it's very contrasty. And that's kind of the look that we want this clip to have throughout the entire clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play here and I'm gonna pause right about where the exposure is starting to change. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an exposure keyframe and a contrast keyframe and then I'm gonna play until that exposure is done changing. So we're just gonna play through this clip and the exposure starts to change. And it seems like we're right about here. The exposure is finally done changing and it's set to where it's going to be. So now I'm gonna bring my exposure down somewhere about 1.2 and I'm going to add quite a bit of contrast. So something like that looks pretty good and seems to match better with the beginning of this clip. So here's our beginning and here's our end. And now by utilizing those keyframes, we have a nice change over time. So the clip is getting brighter, but my keyframes are making that clip darker and making it more uniform throughout the entire clip. So let's give it a watch. Here's where our keyframes start. And as you guys can see, it looks a whole lot better. Now the exposure does change a tiny bit, but I'm not too worried about it because I mean, it is a camera, it's a GoPro. People expect the exposure to not be perfect. However, it does look a lot better than it did before. If I delete these keyframes, you can see it's just 
way too bright compared to the beginning of that clip. So we'll paste those keyframes back on and it looks a whole lot better. So that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about was utilizing keyframes as part of your color grading process. Now you can keyframe anything. So say you wanted your clip to go from black and white to color. You could keyframe your saturation from zero, add that keyframe, move forward a little bit, and keyframe it to 100. Now we have a nice cool effect where the color actually comes into the frame. Check it out. So there you go, a nice black and white to color fade. Super cool effect. I don't know when you would use it, that's up to you, but you can keyframe any of the properties in your Lumetri color effect. So moving on to our second clip, I wanna talk about how to utilize masks in order to bring more attention to your subject. So in this particular clip, obviously Victoria is my subject, and on the right side of the frame, there's really nothing going on. So I don't want people to look at this side of the frame, I want them to look here. And the way that I can actually draw their attention to my subject is by kind of dulling down this side of the frame a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this drop down on my Lumetri color panel and I'm going to go to add Lumetri color effect. This allows us to add an entirely new effect without messing up anything that we've already done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my basic correction and I'm going to bring my exposure down quite a bit. So we'll go like minus 0.2 or so. Now obviously that's affecting my entire clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm gonna add a mask on just the side that I want to dull down a little bit. And perfect, so now I have a mask that's kind of drawing the attention away from that side of the frame. But as you can see, there's a super sharp line here that just doesn't really look that good, but we can easily fix it just by increasing the feather on our mask a little bit and now it looks a lot more natural. So here's our before and here's our after. And as you can see, it just makes my subject pop a little bit more, makes her stand out and kind of takes away from this, you know, boring, distracting background. So let's take a look and see how that plays through and it looks super good. Like I said, it just makes our subject pop a little bit more. Now we'll talk more about masks here in just a second, but now while we're on this clip, we've got some nice skin tones to work with. I wanna talk about how we can actually isolate these skin tones and using our scopes and different things like that in order to get beautiful looking skin tones. Now, like I said, I have done a full video about skin tones, but that was more geared towards beginners and it kind of affects your entire clip. So I wanna talk about isolating these skin tones and getting them to look good without affecting our whole clip. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to add another Lumetri color effect. And that's because we don't want to change anything that we've already done. So you can kind of think of this as like layers in Photoshop. Basically, you add a new effect when you want to do another drastic change. So in this case, we're going to work on our skin tones. And what I want to do is come into my opacity and create a mask around my subject's skin. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just going to help me isolate those skin tones so that I can see them on my scopes. Now for this particular clip, our skin tones are actually pretty good. The saturation looks good. They're falling right on the skin tone line, which if you don't know about the skin tone line, I suggest you watch my other skin tone video, but they do look pretty good. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'll show you guys what to do. However, I don't feel that I really need to make any changes to this particular clip. So what we wanna do in order to isolate and change these skin tones is we're gonna come into our curves and the Lumetri color panel here. And the first thing that we're usually gonna wanna work with is this hue versus hue slider. So super easy, what we're gonna do is take our eyedropper and just grab a portion of our skin tones. Now this hue versus hue slider is gonna allow us to actually change the color of these skin tones without affecting any of the other colors in our clip. So if you find that your skin tones are a little bit too red or a little bit too yellow, you can actually drag this slider up and down while keeping an eye on your scopes to get your skin tones to fall right on that skin tone line. So like I said, for my particular clip, they're pretty good on the line already, but I might bring them down just a tiny bit just to make them fall more accurately on my skin tone line. Now the next thing you might wanna do is come into your Hue vs. Luma and actually brighten these skin tones just a tiny bit. Again, just to kind of make your subject stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna come in and just bring those up a tiny bit. You can see if I go way up, they get super bright. If I go way down, they get super dark. So I wanna just come a tiny bit above where they were before. So now her skin is a little bit brighter. It's gonna glow a little bit. 
And the last thing I can do is add some saturation. Now looking at my scopes, my saturation is pretty good. I usually like my skin tones to be kind of halfway between this line and the baseline here. So they look pretty good, but I can add a tiny bit of saturation for the sake of this tutorial. Now we can come back into our effects controls, delete this mask, and we should have some better looking skin tones. Now it may be hard for you guys to tell there on YouTube, but here's my before and here's my after, slightly brighter, a little less red, and the skin tones are looking pretty good. So you can utilize that technique for pretty much any skin tones. Doesn't matter what color the person is, they're pretty much always gonna fall on that skin tone line. Now the last thing that I wanna talk about is going back to masks to make our subject stand out just a little bit more. So I've got this clip of Victoria, she's sitting on this rock with a super cool view directly in the center of the frame. So because she's in the middle, we wouldn't wanna use the technique that we used before where we'd have to put a mask on this side and put a mask on this side, decrease the exposure to try to make her stand out. So instead of doing it the way we did before, we're actually gonna use a mask to isolate our subject instead. So what I'm gonna do is come up, add another Lumetri color effect, and I wanna make my subject a little bit brighter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is increase my exposure a little bit, and then I'm gonna add this ellipse mask. Now I want this mask to be right around my subject, and again, as you can see, we're gonna have a nice sharp line here that doesn't really look that great. So again, we're gonna increase our feather just so that it blends a little bit better, and now we have our before and our after. As you can see, it's just making my subject pop a tiny bit more. But this clip is actually moving from left to right. So eventually that mask is gonna get off my subject and it's gonna be floating around somewhere over here. So the way that we can fix that is by actually tracking this mask. So what I'm gonna do, Let's come to the beginning of my clip, find my mask, make sure it's over my subject, and then I'm just gonna click this play button. Now Premiere Pro is gonna automatically track that mask to my subject as long as you have enough contrast and enough isolation on your subject. So we're gonna let this finish up and then we'll come right back. All right, so we're back, our mask is tracked, and now we can see that our mask follows our subject nicely as we scrub through the frame. So it's gonna stay on our subject and it's gonna look super natural and smooth, and we really didn't have to do anything besides press this play button. So now we can see here's what our clip looks like before and here's what it looked like after. Just adds a little bit more pop and a little more emphasis on our subject. Now the last thing that I wanted to talk about is some of those cases where your mask won't track to your subject. Maybe they're moving too fast or it just can't figure out what your subject actually is. For example, you guys have seen this clip of Colby riding his mountain bike. So if I wanted to apply a mask to Colby, there's no way Premiere Pro is gonna be able to track him accurately. So what you can do is you can come in, you can add your mask and you can actually track it by hand. So let's say we're gonna go in and just for the sake of the tutorial, I just wanna make this very obvious for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to increase the exposure quite a bit here. So. Let's say that's my mask and that's what I want it to look like. Now, obviously the tracker is not gonna be able to keep focus on Colby. So what you can do is you can set a keyframe on your mask path and then you can just move forward a couple frames, maybe three frames and drag the mask like that. Then we'll click down here move forward a couple more frames, drag the mask and you can make it a little bit smaller and so on. Click down, go forward a couple frames, take your mask, make it smaller. And basically you're just going a couple frames at a time, tracking the mask by hand. So keep that in mind. If your mask won't track to your subject, just go through and do it by hand. It's super easy and it really doesn't take a whole lot of time. So those are all the techniques that I have for you guys in today's tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. So there you go guys, a couple of advanced color grading techniques that you guys can utilize just to kind of make your videos stand out just a little bit more. It does take a little bit of extra effort, but I think at the end of the day, that extra effort is worth it when you're already putting so much time and energy into these travel videos and client videos, you might as well go that little extra step just to make your videos stand out even more. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more, and if you have any questions, I always answer them over on my Instagram, so send me a DM at CodyBlue underscore. But until next time, we'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm gonna go shovel some snow, so peace out.